Okay, so we can ask the question, why do we believe that this is important? And um, again, it relates to the payoff on, the, on the, the forward and the futures position. So very important in terms of modeling forward and future contracts is the payoff. And then we can link that also to option positions. But if we take A's position here, which is long, obviously A gains, the price goes up if we lock in, delivery price of 100, and then the price of the delivering uh, the underlying uh, goes up to 150. We obviously gain, if the price goes down, we're obviously losing, right? And being able to uh, model that, explain that, explain that it's a zero sum game, we've got to always consider that in um, a forward or a futures uh, contract, there's two counterparties, there is an A and a B, and then if one gains, it comes at the expense of the other, okay? Um, so if we look at B here, uh, if A is gaining, that can only be because B is losing, right? Um, and we have a zero-sum game, okay? Again, if we examine that, we also, might pose the question, so if all the uh, futures contracts net out be zero, then why do we have all these people pushing around pieces of paper and trading and non-stop? It is zero, this is like a casino. And when you net out the, ben the benefits and the losses, uh, the values uh, aggregate to zero. Uh, and is the futures market then not just a place where people are shuffling uh, bits of paper or electronic trades? What the futures markets uh, provides us with is a way of repackaging our risk and selling it onto others. And another way of looking at that is it provides us with certainty. So if I'm BP and I'm selling British Petroleum, and I'm selling oil, I know over a particular timeline that I'm guaranteed that $100. And that knowing means that we can say, okay, we have certain cost structure, like labor, like uh, uh, drilling and so on, and these have to be covered. With the $100 that I've locked in, can I absorb these costs? If I can, then on the underlying business can be said for that time period to be profitable. That's very important for businesses uh, because it involves managing liquidity and cash resources. And if we cannot cover our costs over a given period, then for a given accounting period, it would appear we're making losses. Okay, so this uh, triggers a whole set of market reactions that perhaps we can avoid. And for that reason, the forward and the future positions uh, help uh, companies manage their risk profile. So even if we know, and we know that uh, forward and futures are zero sum games, then what's the justification? The justification is it provides certainty in a, say, in a similar fashion to the way we get some certainty by making, by having a uh, uh, insurance, right? Also, uh, why are we interested in these payoffs? What else is revealed here? When we look at the long forward position, right, maybe we would say, could there be an asymmetric payoff? Could we reconsider, could we re-engineer this so that we only have the upside, right? So for instance, there's a long forward position. Is there a way we could eliminate the negative position and keep only the positive payoff with a similar timeline, right? So maybe, again, we're considering a one-year period. And we're saying, can we engineer a financial contract that produces this type of payoff? So rather than having a symmetric type payoff, could we create an asymmetric payoff where we only have 
the positive outcome, otherwise zero. And when we look at the call position, if we come down here and look at the long forward of futures, if we're to engineer out of that the positive position only, we have then the payoff for a call option. So the difference here is the, the payoff on a futures contract is equivalent to, so if we say here, the payoff in the futures is equal to F minus K, where K is the delivery price. For a, a call option, then the payoff in the contract for a call option is equal to, let's call this C, is equal to the maximum of F minus K or zero. And that's equivalent to the maximum of the spot price. So the spot price at the delivery period, so F subscript capital T, S subscript capital T, they will be the same for the reason given before, that the, the price, if you look at the uh, evolution of the futures price relative to the spot price, they converge over time, right? So the short time period, the remaining time period, Right? With time decay, futures price and the spot price converge. Okay, now when we say the maximum of ST minus K or zero, uh, if we have to pick the maximum, any negative value here, right? any negative value, so any negative value on this side, if S subscript capital T is inferior to, so for instance, if we have a value of this is 100, and the futures price F of T falls to 80, then the payoff in the futures is zero, because we select which is greater, the zero or the negative value. The zero value is greater, right? The zero value is greater, and we take the zero value. So for any FT less than the, the exercise price, so here uh, K denotes the exercise price, for any FT less than K, for any negative value, then we take the maximum of the two, and that would be zero. So the, when we examine the payoff in a futures contract, the lowest value would be zero. And that's an example of an asymmetric payoff, asymmetric payoff, call the C. And then that applies with how do we value this. Then typically, of course, this could not be given away for free, and we would expect to pay a premium. So it's logical that if, when we enter into a futures contract and the payoff is like that, the cost of entering the contract is normally zero, but for a call option, cost of entering the contract wouldn't be for free, no free lunches in finance, we would expect to pay some premium, right? We would expect to pay a premium, and then the way we determine the premium is given by typically a model like Black Shoals or the Black Model, or maybe a binomial type framework. So that's the linkage between. Okay, now for the put option, we have something similar. Let's consider our payoffs here for a moment. There's a long futures, a short forward of futures. And when we remove the negative area from the futures, we get the payoff from a call. Have here a long call, a long futures. Again, we could use K and K, and we have the payoff. Maybe we could refer to this one as being C. And here the payoff for the long futures. There is a negative region, there's a positive region. With a put option, we retain only the positive region and we get rid of the negative. Let me have K here. So the futures price and the spot price. Uh, at FT are the same, right? So at the time period when the option matures at capital T, 
F and S have converged. And the payoff on the put option, the payoff in the call is equal to the maximum of ST minus K zero. Then for the put option, and this is the long put here, the long put contract, for the long put, the payoff would be equal to maximum. And we just reverse K minus ST or zero. Okay, so there is a linkage here between the long forward futures and the long call. The, long, the short forward of futures and the put option. And in just in visual terms, the difference between the short forward and futures and the long put is that we've eliminated the negative region here. And likewise over here, we eliminated the negative region so that we're left with here with the call option, the minimum value, the minimum payoff is zero, and the minimum payoff on the put option is zero. And the way we describe call option is that in one year's time, we have the right to buy as opposed to the obligation. So a call option gives the right, right, gives a right to buy. And the put option gives a right, a right in inverted commas, a right to sell. Whereas with a forward or a futures, there's basically an obligation embedded in to buy. You have no choice. And here, you likewise with the short futures, you have an obligation to sell. Okay. Again, the idea is there is no choice here. Uh, with a long call, you have a right, right? It's an option. And with a long put, you have the right to sell. And you will only sell that if it is fortuitous, if it is of benefit to you, right? So that's, these are key differences here, but this describe the links between the long forward futures, the long call, and the short forward futures to the long position where you have the right to sell. Call option gives you the right to buy some underlying asset. The put option gives you the right to sell. And these are not independent of, uh, and are not unrelated to the forward and the future. So before we understand option theory, generally we try to understand how the forward and future markets operates and the payoffs on those uh, contracts.